Hi Raspberry Shakers, this is Brandon of the Raspberry Shake Project and today I'm going to show you how to download, open, and use the Swarm program. Swarm is one of the many tools that we recommend using for visualizing data from your Raspberry Shake. And it's an excellent tool for interrogating the data and seeing the data, for example, from the last 24 hours in, as, in a bird's eye view. Swarm was developed by the United States Geological Survey. It is maintained by them today. And it is a program that here in the office, when we're testing Raspberry Shakes, uh, it's a program that we use every single day. So it's highly recommended. Um, you'll start by navigating to the home page of your Raspberry Shake. Most users will do that by navigating to say raspberry shake.local, uh, but in this case I've connected directly to the IP of the Raspberry Shake on my local network. Uh, you'll see an icon down here that says Swarm Download. You'll download the program and I'm going to save that here. Okay. And then we'll open up the downloads folder. There's Swarm. It downloads Swarm as a zip file. I'll extract that here locally. And then you'll see the folder is Swarm 2.8.3. And so I'll open that up. And their Swarm was developed in order to be executed for the Linux environment, Macintosh, as well as Windows. And so for Windows users, you'll just double quick click this file that's called Swarm Console BAT. For Macintosh and Linux users, you'll have to open up a terminal. You'll navigate to that directory. Open up Swarm. And you'll execute the program as sh space swarm.sh. That opens up Swarm. Here we are. And this is what you'll see in the default view. There will be a data source panel on this side that has two sources. One is MyShake, the other is RS Community. MyShake is a direct connection over your local network to your local Raspberry Shake. My, the RS Community data source it connects to the Raspberry Shake community server and pulls up all of the data for all the Raspberry Shakes out there in the world. So we'll start here with my shake. We'll expand this. You'll see that I have a Raspberry Shake with three components. That's a Raspberry Shake 3D. If I click on any of the channels displayed here with a double click, it will open up a window that will show a helicorder plot, which shows the last 24 hours of data in 30 minute long segments. So on this side you'll see local time. Here is UTC time and if you click anywhere in here Swarm will open up the uh, a window that has the data. right? And so the very first plot is just the waveforms. If you right click you'll then see the power spectra. Okay. If you right click again, you'll see the spectrogram, which is a display of the waveform data in the frequency domain, which is excellent. It's an excellent tool for actually looking for and identifying earthquakes. So, for example, this here might be an earthquake. So, if we click on that, we'll see, and we zoom out a little bit here, we'll see that there's a kind of abrupt onset to some low frequency below 5 hertz energy okay. and that does indeed look like an earthquake okay and that is low frequency likely because it is an earthquake that's occurred very far away from where I am here in Panama I'll close this here we'll now open up the raspberry shake community and I want to open up the Raspberry Shake that's in my home. So I'll look through this list to do that. In this list are hundreds of Raspberry Shakes. These are all the Raspberry Shakes that have ever been online and entered the Raspberry Shake community server. The ones that are in black font are currently online. For example, this one. 
that the, this, this means that there's data in the last 24 hours. If it's grayed out, that means there hasn't been data recently. So the Raspberry Shake that I have at home is R27F1. So we'll go up here to the twos. We'll look for 27F1. Here it is. This is the Raspberry Shake that's in my home. That's about uh, just a five minute drive from here in the office. And I see a number of earthquakes. They're quite easy to identify in many cases because um, they're very compact little balls of energy like this one here. Here's an earthquake. You can see that here. Here's the primary arrival. And then you can kind of make out that there's a secondary wave in this portion. A better example of what a classic earthquake looks like is this one down here. You can see the P and the S, so the primary and the secondary wave. So if I click on that, you know, boom, here's the P wave, and then here's the secondary wave. And so if I click, right click once, twice, then we get the spectrogram. And now you can see how easy it is to, to determine that it's an earthquake uh, using the spectrogram. You'll, after a while, you'll be able to see these on your own. So here's the primary wave, and that's the, that's the energy from that wave. And here's the secondary wave. This is the same earthquake we looked at before that only has energy down here in the low frequencies. If I click on that, there we are. There's energy in the lower frequencies. I can zoom out a little bit. And this is an earthquake that has um, less energy in the higher frequencies up here, like this one here. And there's some energy in the high frequencies. So this one is very local to where I am, and this one is far away from where I am. Now what we can do is um, there's some things that are quite useful in terms of customizing the look and feel of what we're seeing here. One of them is the waveform view settings here. There's lots of options that you can come in here and play with. And Swarm is one of these programs that if you spent, let's say, about an hour clicking around, you will have explored all the options that exist. So I'll close that. Uh, here's another option. We can change the gain of the signal that we're seeing, uh, but just with the slider bar. And then there is another settings window, which is kind of a global settings window. And so for instance, this is really useful, the view time feature. I could do something like 2018, 04, and jump to um, a few days ago. So today is April 11th. We'll jump to the 8th. And then you can see here that, you know, these are really big earthquakes, really easy to pull out. Um, this is, uh, these are two very large local earthquakes. So that's that one. There's one down here. And then you can see the spectrogram view here. And again, to change from one window to the next, all I'm doing is right-clicking. If I want to change the zoom, I can do that up here. And then there's lots of other features in Swarm. So for example, this is the screenshot feature. Um, down here are options as well. You can do real-time streaming. At least that works for the direct connection to your Raspberry Shake. Uh, and you can also pull up Raspberry Shakes from anywhere in the world. And so, for example, there's a Raspberry Shake in New Zealand that is RC144. So we'll look for that one. RC144, here it is. I double-click to open it. That opens the, the data. And you can see that there's not too much activity back here. And the background peak-to-peak -peak count is, okay, this is already converted to meters per second, so that's already showing this um, velocity. But you can see that there's, there's, you might be able to see that there's diurnal activity, right? This is higher noise level in this part, these 12 hours, than there are in these 12 hours. And now, so that could be the difference between night and day, per se. But this earthquake stands out very nicely. So there it is, there's the onset, the primary wave, here's the secondary wave, We'll zoom out a little bit, um, right-click to see the power spectra, and then right-click again to see the spectrogram, which is a, just basically a frequency color map.
So that's it. I just wanted to give you a quick introduction. Take some time, click around with all the options, explore Swarm. Um, it is a fun tool. It is excellent for investigating earthquakes. If you want to go back in time, you can just click the button here and it will load uh, the previous 24 hours. Um, things happen pretty quickly and so the connection is really good. So take some time, explore. If you have any questions, you can always write us on the Google forum. Take care.